Hi everyone, welcome back to YouTube. The world is frozen, literally. Everything is covered in ice, including the arena, which is very boring. So there's no exercising today. So, well, other than the magic roundabout. So I thought I will do an updated what I feed my horses video because you guys always find it really interesting and a few things have changed. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, I've just been doing some mucking out. I had just gone to get Zora off the horse walker, but she was bucking on it. So I thought maybe she could do another 10 minutes. They're all rather bored, but at least they can move their feet and at least they get out of their stables twice a day. But it is rubbish. This weather is boring. I'm doing a bit with the massage gun. That's mad, you can see it moving in the thing. She really likes it. Nice. You like almost can see it in slow-mo. Oh, Our eyes are not good enough quality. What do you think, Mo? I thought you wouldn't like this. Mo is falling asleep. It's a nice personal massage servant. I seem to have got a good bit. <laughs> so Mo, as well as having a massage, is also wearing her Weather Vita Therapy Tech rug. So this has a section in it. You can see it's quite well worn now, but this section, I'll turn this off for a second actually. So you can, it has a different section that goes all the way through the top of the rug and down over the shoulder. It's also got this lovely padded, padded part under there so this bit's like extra spongy and it works with ceramic technology she says why have you stopped um which is it works with their own body heat so when they get warm it gets warmer so then it um basically promotes healing circulation all that kind of thing i got it from pet and pony um and i highly rate it ever since she's been wearing it She's been feeling more supple and like takes her less time to warm up and being 16, that's really important. So yeah, so I highly recommend them. If you're looking for something that is sort of complementary to all the other things that we do, then uh, yeah, you like it, don't you? Would you like me to continue to massage you with this thing? She's like, yeah, why did you stop, human? <laughs> so you guys have asked what I feed my horses. <laughs> So I've just been eating a piece bit of mango. Are you ready to see something hilarious? Oh my goodness. Yes. Goodbye. I didn't know that they liked mango. <laughs> and yes, I'm being very careful with the fork. Last bit, just come down to check these guys. Are you okay, my old girl? Old nanny. So I just do that and it's really cold. And I do a little bit of armpit checking. Oh yes, toasty, snuggly, warms under there, Nanette. Nanette is 25 this year, I think. Kenko, warm as toast under there, aren't you? We had to cut Kenko's tail quite short the other day because she had like jangly, like frozen bits. And then here we have Indy, who is actually wearing Dee Dee's rug. Hmm, that's interesting. Seemed to have some sort of injury has gone on on the front of that rug. Oh, she moves nicely. I've not ever actually seen her trot properly. Oh, good breeding. Good job, Kenko. I'd like to check under Indy's rug, really. But <laughs> they all seem to think that Ken, uh, Bentley, who's up the top with holding the bucket, is gonna feed them, which he is not going to do. <laughs> oh, bless them. It was very cold. 
I um, noticed that Indy had some blood on her rug, right on the one of the front straps, and um, she's quite more well, sensitive because she's a foal, and so I really wanted to check that it was like okay. So I came and got her halter, and I went and had a look, and I could see I she let me look all in her mouth. I think she must have got something caught, maybe on the rug, and um, yeah, pretty scary. But I always try and check, come on Bentley, those field horses at least twice a day, if not three times, because if something like that was to happen and it was to go unnoticed, well, that's really bad. So yeah, right, I'm gonna go and see if there's anybody in the feed room, because if there isn't, I'm gonna go and let you guys give you a little feed update. I just think it's really important. And it's probably the first thing that I talk about with clients when they come to me asking about problem horses, that kind of thing. We regularly talk about nutrition and the rest of it. Oh, I tell you what I'm gonna show you first. I'm gonna show you the hay that I feed first and why that is so important. Coming live from the hay barn sheltering a little bit so hay is incredibly important um i feed probably 95 percent hay and then five percent hard feed i don't even know if that would be the right proportion but they are all on ad lib hay so ad lib means any amount that they need they get um there is never a limit there's never a, like they get hayed four times a day three or four times a day first thing in the morning then after they're mucked out, once again at lunchtime, and then again in the evening. It is purposefully cut at the right time of year and uh, managed in the right way so that it is suitable for laminitics. I'm working with the supplier Old Manor Farm for a very, very long time, nine years, I think. And um, so we have a very good relationship and he understands how important it is to me. Do you like the hay, Bentley? <laughs> how important it is to me for the hay to be of really, really high quality. It's not dusty, it is really tasty stuff and they all absolutely love it and they eat a lot of it and I go through a huge amount of it at this time of year but that is fine and that is what they need to keep their systems working because they are grazers, they are not designed to eat big bulky one feed a day kind of thing. Right, time to go and head into the feed room, I hope. So I've made it into the feed room but there's nobody else in here so I can show you really simply the things that i feed this is what i feed the horses so the young horses in the field they get this which is the dodson and horrell sure grow so it's um like really good quality protein um when they're growing i don't like to feed them a lot of bulk i like them to feed I like to feed them a small amount of feed. This is what I choose to feed them. It's uh, got amino acids, it's low starch, so it's a, like a good thing for controlled growth. You've got to be really careful when they're growing that you don't actually feed them too much too soon and then they get problems in their joints and all sorts. So for example, Dee Dee, she's two now, she'll get two cups per day, that is all. And then she gets some chaff and I'll talk about the chaff in a moment. The next thing, and this is probably the thing I feed the most, is the Denji Healthy Hooves. So it's molasses free and it is essentially a complete feed, says it on the front. Um, so it's very low starch, it's got absolutely zero sugar. So talk about sugar a lot. Sugar isn't necessarily a bad thing. Horses have to digest sugar all the time, hay, grass, that kind of thing. But it's when we add processed sugar to the diet that that isn't so positive. I like the lenses on my camera are really grubby, sorry. So things like uh, when you add a, like a molasses to a mix, that kind of thing, I just try and avoid it the best I can. The pony nuts I feed actually do contain a small amount of molasses, but not so much that I would be worried about it affecting the gut health, because gut health is so up on the high up on the list. So this is the next thing. And I have actually more recently started feeding this. So this is pink, pink mash and it's a key flow feed. 
Um, it's very low energy rating, as you can see, and it's low starch, low sugar, high fiber. So this is essentially a mash. So it's actually just made of beetroot. Uh, beetroots for humans are so good for them. And someone has caught onto this and tested it out with horses and has proven that it is very good for horses too. The beetroot and it's got linseed in it as well, which is something that I do add as well but it's the prebiotics and probiotics and it's basically designed to facilitate the horse's insides working the best they possibly can while adding some condition so i feed that to the older horses um my own horses that are in more work i don't so much feed that to all of them as such i don't feed it like a blanket approach again i feed what they need so for example some of the, the cobs that come in for training that are you know, relatively well fueled just on hay, I will just feed them a small handful of the chaff with some water. And if they are getting a supplement, then they would have that supplement. I'll come on to supplements at the end. So that is the pink mash. And that is something that I have more recently be been feeding. Um, I have also got some speedy beet. So it's unmolassed sugar beet flakes. Um, and that is something that I have also been feeding. It's a good palatable feed. It's good for condition. I am kind of steering away from that more and onto the pink mash because I believe that the pink mash is more beneficial. It's not that the speedy beet is not beneficial, but it's kind of, it's not going to be adding as much value to the horse's diet. So it looks like this. It comes in a, like a pink pellet and you just soak it for five minutes before you feed it. And they really like it. So this is the shore grow. So again, it's like a balancer. So that's what I the feed. And then again, it's that same cup that you just saw in the pink mash. Uh, and then that's the uh, speedy beat that we are going through. This is the, uh, the chaff that I feed. So you can see it's really loose. It's not sort of stuck together because it's not got any sugar in it. And it's also got little, uh, like, fibery nuts in it. So this is what makes it a complete feed. It smells like garlic and joy. And I think, actually, I found it really palatable and not many of them aren't keen on it. What else have we got here? Aha, this is important. Excuse the bag. It lasts a long time, so it has to be a bit manky. Himalayan rock salt all the way from Pakistan. I actually just bought it on Amazon. So I feed every single horse 30 grams of salt every day, every single one. Even the, the mares and foals in the field, they get that split between them. Uh, I wouldn't so much feed the foals that amount, but they, also, they do have salt in the feed that they are eating. Um, salt is so important. It's important for metabolizing everything in their bodies. It's important for their digestion. Again, it is important for their you know, uh, salt production, all of that kind of things. But all year, regardless of the weather, I feed every horse 30 grams of salt per day. And that isn't very much. So this is the salt. And this is the little scoop that we use. Slightly more like a, a heaped scoop like this, half in each feed. So the last feed I feed, and this, well, actually, no, two more. Uh, so this is just very basic pony nuts. I um, use them as like a palatability feed. So what I mean by that is I use them basically to um, in increase a horse's want to eat the feed. Quite a few of them get a few different supplements, like uh, Mo, for example, and she can be a bit fussy. So I like to give her some pony nuts to in basically entice her to eat the feed a bit more. Now that she's on the pink mash, though, I'm really interested to see whether I need those. Um, they've not got loads of kind of nutritional... Goodness, nutritional benefits but they also don't do any harm so they're kind of like a good feed to add a bit of bulk and a bit of tastiness to the feed to encourage them if they are maybe eating more supplements and you just want to add a little bit more bulk to the feed now the last one that i'm going to talk about this natural feed is the micronized linseed so that lives in this bin here in here here here, here it is and this is micronized linseed. So you'll see it's got like little seeds in it and it's very fine. And what it is, is it's a little bit like us eating avocados. It's good fat. So 
they we all need fat in our diet that is a thing for their coat and their skin and their feet and their guts didn't know that so actually we are uh, we feed the linseed for many many reasons you can feed it in a high quantity for condition so for example if you've got a horse that you want to put weight on then feeding quite a lot of linseed can be very beneficial but i actually only really feed 100 grams a day now again i'm feeding the pink mash now so i can cut that back a little bit but i will still keep feeding the ones that need it for condition a little bit more so for example mo is on it Zora, she uh, doesn't have it because she is well looking. But yeah, so I feed the older horse in the field. So Nanette, she gets quite a high quantity of it because it's good for condition. Um, Megan's horse, who was here before, he was on it. Uh, he was a thoroughbred. So it's those kind of horses, the ones that maybe are in need of a little bit more help in terms of kind of good fat in their diet that is something that i feed it is relatively inexpensive because you don't have to feed very much of it like i said that cup i was showing you that's 100 grams so i would feed one 16 hand you know full grown horse one cup per day split between the feeds if you're looking for much more in you know you need a lot more condition then yes you can feed more of it talk about feed i feed what each horse needs so i don't feed complete feeds because i believe that I can do that more cheaply and more effectively without the kind of added stuff that we don't know what it is. So like I would feed basic pony nuts, but if I needed to add condition to a horse's feed, I'd feed the pony nuts and the linseed rather than feeding a conditioning pony nut because I believe that sometimes, well, I have had instances where a conditioning nut although despite not designed for the purpose, has sent a horse completely off the rails because it's got something else in it that I'm not aware of that makes their head blow off. So it's this knowing what you're putting in means that then you know what you're gonna be getting out. So often the horses that come here are difficult or they've got uncertainty in their lives. You know, they're not sure of their way of training. They're not sure of themselves. So I make sure that I'm starting at zero when I feed them so that I can discount that as an issue as something that is potentially creating the behavior so that is why i feed in that way because you know if ob started misbehaving or being really fresh or being really anxious i could look at what i'm feeding him no nope, it's not that and then i can add things that may be helpful and that's what i'm going to talk about in a moment the supplements that i use but it's always this starting from zero start with hay not haylage haylage can cause problems on its own it's long stranded and that can build up as gut as gas again in the hind gut and cause all sorts of ulcerative issues um so if you've got a horse that is maybe problematic look at their diet i don't mean that like it's going to be the be all and end all but it's a bloody good place to start and it is nine times out of ten where i start when people call me up and they say i'm having this problem with this horse it's doing this this and this which people do a lot these days and I talk to them about nutrition first. I say, what are you feeding? Okay, could you cut that out? Could you cut that out? Do we know that that's a problem? No, we don't know that it is 100%, but it could be. And if it could be, then it's worth taking away. If it then wasn't the issue, then maybe you can add it back in. Or you've got to ask yourself, do they really need that? It's like the balancer. I only feed it to the horses that really need it because otherwise I'm just feeding them nutrient that they're not going to absorb. You know, they're going to just pee it back out again. It's like humans and protein shakes. Yes, they have their place. And when you're doing lots of muscle building activity, then protein is necessary. But there is a definite argument for eating too much protein and actually then it then rinses out of your system through your urine. We won't get into that because I'll have the bodybuilders after me. Anyway, right, let's chat supplements. So, <laughs> supplements. You can see a theme here, right? So we have got some, this is something I feed to uh, the older horses. So Mo gets this, uh, Nanette gets this. It is a pain reliever. It is an, a natural anti-inflammatory. I actually buy this from Amazon. Helps with inflammation, it helps with pain relief, and it generally helps with like arthritic type cases. So that is why I feed that. Other thing I still feed, yes, I know I bang on about it all the time, is spirulina. So here it is. This is the one that I feed. This is the organic spirulina powder. Again, I buy it from Amazon. 
and I don't know if you'll be able, I mean, look how green it is. Wow, it's so green. It's antihistemic, so it's very good as a, like, works as an antihistamine. It helps stop itchy horses being so itchy. Uh, it's also very good for their breathing. We used to feed Obi a breathing supplement all the time. No, not anymore. We just feed in the spirulina. So, yeah, highly recommend it. It's like a superfood. Um, it's also very good for helping muscle growth because it is good protein again, but in not too much of a quantity. So I feed again, 30 grams a day, one of those scoops per day for a big horse, smaller horses, I'd feed less anyway. So then we get onto the premier performance supplements. So as you can see, we have basically the whole range. So the gastro premier, this is something that we feed a lot of. So it is all about helping the horse help itself um when i spoke with camilla who owns the company she was basically talking through how it works and the way that it works is it has complex amino acids in it that help the horse's brain know what to do with the natural ingredients that are inside it so that is the very basic science behind the premier performance supplements so i feed the gastro premier the moody mare that's the one for mo it helps regulate her cycle amazingly um she really struggles and can have problems with having these kind of wild cycles where she seems very very uncomfortable so um we keep her on the moody mare all year round and it just helps her feel comfortable you can tell when she's not happy um you know i imagine it would be like getting really bad period pains but quite regularly so by giving her that it helps to limit the symptoms of that um it works with something called it's got raspberry leaf in it and if you look up raspberry leaf for humans it's very very powerful stuff mo also gets the hoof growth coming powder is my absolute savior in this weather it is obi is on it all the time because it just helps him feel confident it's not like a sedative it is a confidence powder uh, we also use the um the calming cookies um, that we really like we uh, then use these to basically top this up um, and this is a very interesting supplement so this is the Nutri Plus now this is to enable healing so the Nutri Plus is all about the build-up of collagen so collagen is uh, what our body like is stuck together with basically so the and by feeding something that helps the production of collagen it helps promote healing and growth and general bodily condition. So for example, it's gonna be, I'm hoping, helping her feet to strengthen up and not be your typical thoroughbred foot. So that is the Nutri Plus. Now there is one supplement that I want to talk about. Is that the stuff? Yes. Milk thistle. I feed this to everything when, uh, if they ever go on bute or antibiotics. It is about liver function and it helps them process things better and flush things back out again. So, yes, those are my supplements. That is what I add to the feed. And I don't need to be in the feed room anymore and it's cold. Bring your carrot then. Come on, bring your carrot. Apples and carrots are also very important. Lexi, you're not going to bring it. Come on. So those are the feeds that I feed. Um, I try to keep it really simple. So it, for example, if your horse was to come in for training and we were unsure of where the behavior was coming from, I would start just with half a scoop of chaff. That would be it, and water. Um, and if they showed signs of anxiety or uncertainty, you know, if they were really unsettled, then I would feed them some of the calming powder as well on top of that. But that would be my, where I would start. Uh, if they needed condition, I'd add linseed. If they needed, um, uh, yeah, condition on top of that, then I'd maybe think about adding the pink mash. So I just really feed what each horse needs at a time. And that would be the way that I would feed them. So I would start at that base level and then if I need to add things, I can. So if I need to add energy, for example, I add split peas. I haven't got any at the moment because I don't need to add the energy. But a horse like Obi, who sometimes when we're doing a lot of competition in the middle of the summer, he's a bit sluggish in the summer sometimes. Come on, in the car. Because, well, he's a big guy and is a lot of, you know, he doesn't cope well in the heat as such. Oh, God, I've just got to get in the car. I'm so cold. Um, that was a lot standing around. Oh, goodness. But yeah, so that that is what I do. I feed the split peas in the summer to add the energy, but I don't feed them when I don't need them. And I don't feed him a complete feed because I wouldn't know if by feeding him a complete feed, 
that I was adding things that he didn't need. So I just add what they need. I don't know if you guys are getting the message yet, but hopefully you are. Anyway, that is my updated feeding vlog. I don't know if that was interesting or if I just rambled, but um, yeah. And I implore you to look at your horse's diet. Like really look at it and work out, do you know everything that you're feeding them? The point I'm trying to make is just have a look at your horse's diet and have a think about it. Are there things in your horse's diet that you don't know what they're doing there? You know, is there a really sugary mix that you're feeding that although looks like lovely granola to you actually is of no benefit to your horse whatsoever because definitely feed companies are quite smart and they will tell you to, you know, they, they know that the packaging is for us to see. A horse never reads the bag. Uh, horses don't really eat with their eyes they eat with their noses and they eat with their you know their senses of what they need but really look at that because you might be able to a save yourself some money by not be feeding a load of complete feeds that are full of crap and b start to work out what your baseline is with your horse where is that baseline what do they need on the basic and then what do you need to add to supplement their diet for them i don't believe in blanket feeding approaches you know you see people walking around with a big scoop and they kind of feed every horse the same thing how can that possibly be because i need to eat something different to my partner my partner needs to eat something different from his friend who's the same age and the same height and the, you know whatever so it is so important that we look at each horse individually and I make sure that all the time I'm talking with the girls, they make the feeds, but I'm talking with them about what, they're fe what we're feeding and why and they have good understanding of that and they wouldn't change the feed without my say-so. We, It is very important to me because I can control the training on the outside, but I also have to be able to control what's going on on the inside. And to do that, I have to be in understanding of what is in the things I'm feeding. So I have to know about the nutritional analysis of the hay. I have to understand about the low starch and low sugar content so that I know I'm doing the best I can for the inside of the horse and the outside of the horse. It is a thorough approach. It's not just training livery, but oh yeah, feed them whatever you like, or it's training, but they're still on haylage and actually that's the thing that's causing the negative behavior so have a look see what you can do ask me a question i don't mind speak to a nutritionist if you like avoid speaking nutrition to nutritionists that are directly associated with feed companies uh i know previously i did do a video with a feed company they actually didn't suggest that i changed a lot they really liked the way that i fed they liked the fact that i fed basic things they encouraged me to use their versions of the feeds i've just shown you but other than that there was not much difference i've stuck with the sure grow i really like that i think it's really good for the young horses they look fantastic on it they don't grow too fast which is something i'm really terrified of so yeah i mean in terms of why don't I work with them, that company anymore, it's because I don't really need to as such. And it wasn't, a, you know, a sponsored opportunity as such. They had willing to kind of gift me some stuff, but it wasn't really enough for me to warrant solely using their feed. There we are. That is my updated feed vlog. I hope you found it interesting. I hope I can ride some horses in the next video because I'm getting bored of not being able to. Uh, I've just remembered that I need something to have the barn. So that's great. And... Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I will see you for next time. Thank you so much for watching.